Hi, my name is Chris Kiek, and I'm the Technical Director at R11 Steel Detailing and BIM Services. Today we're going to review an example submittal of steel detailing deliverables that we create for fabricators. Today's example is going to show output from Tecla structures, but we also deliver projects with SDS2 and work with Revit models. We coordinate with our sister company Rexcon Design to do connection, stair, and erection design on projects. We use both SDS2 and Descon Plus to assist us in the connection design process and are licensed in most of the United States and Canada. Here at R11, we provide our detailing through a three-step process. First, we do a detailed estimate, review your detailing standards, and make sure we're aligned in a project kickoff. Next, we go through a three-phase modeling approach, checking things at each step to prevent errors and provide early deliverables. Lastly, we create drawings, do a presentation check, and produce a transmittal including digital CNC, bill of material, and BIM files. Here's a quick look at the 3D model that we produce the example detailing deliverables from. You can see here that there's a variety of different types of connections, including clip angle, shear tab, and bracing connections. We also included some miscellaneous steel or accessories steel, such as the bent plate pour stop here. Here inside of the example submittal package folder, you're going to start by opening up the transmittal document. Inside of this document, you're going to see all of the different files that are included in this particular submittal. This includes, in this case, erection drawings, assembly drawings, single part drawings or submaterial drawings, two 3D models, including a 3D DWG as well as an IFC file format, which could be exported for coordination and class checking, as well as bill of material files here, including text reports for bolts, for material lists, point-to-point -point bolt lists, as well as a KISS file that can be imported into programs like FabTroll as well as FabSuite. Now let's go ahead and go into the subfolders in this submittal package. Let's start with assembly drawings. We name all of our PDFs based on the piece mark as the starting of the name, and then we include the current revision number. If we open up one of these PDFs, here for example B1, we can come in here and we can see all of the dimensions as well as the part marks and bill of materials that we currently use on our drawings. We can print these drawings in color or in black and white format, however you'd prefer. When it comes to title blocks and bill of materials, at starting point we use the different settings that are included out of the box with Tecla structures, but we can easily add your logo as well as manipulate the title block to fit your needs. When it comes to bill of materials, we try to stick to the out of the box settings here as long as it meets all of the requirements that are part of your detailing standards. Here we have an example column drawing. At R11, we feel that assembly drawings are basically going to be showing the information that's required to fit up and fabricate this assembly. This means that all of the dimensions and sections that are cut are added in order to make things clear for the shop. In this particular case, we're not showing any of the submaterial plate dimensions or connection material dimensions that are needed to fabricate those individual submaterial parts. We showcase those dimensions on the single part drawings. We work diligently to make sure that all of the welding information is accurately placed in the model and then automatically shown on the drawings. It's also important to note that basically any of the quantities and things that you see in the bill of material or are dimensioned and shown on the drawing are an exact 100% representation of what's in the 3D model. Here's an example of another beam drawing. You'll tend to notice that we detail one piece per sheet versus the traditional multiple pieces per sheet. Here at R11, we found that doing this makes it much easier and more efficient to deal with design changes. Now we know that sometimes certain assemblies that have lots of different parts on them can't all fit on a nice 11 by 17 sheet size. So we easily increment larger and more complicated assemblies to 18 by 24s and then 24 by 36 as needed. From there, we'll then change the scale of the drawing views from one inch equals a foot down to three quarter inch equals a foot and then half inch equals a foot at worst case scenario once we've reached the 24 by 36 sheet size. 
On erection drawings, we consistently use 24 by 36 sheet sizes as a default. We oftentimes will include a 3D cover sheet view so that way it's easier for the erector to understand exactly what they're looking at on the plans and the elevations. On our plan views, we'll cut sections that require any special conditions for the field, including field welding, as well as any elevation differences or special conditions that the field needs to understand. For submaterial or part drawings, we essentially take each submaterial mark and put it on its own 8.5 by 11 sheet. Here we can see for this angle submaterial drawing that we have all of the dimensions as well as the slot information here to fabricate this individual part. We then will see the quantity of the marks as well as a reference to the quantity and which assembly that this particular mark belongs on. By default, unless you specify it in your detailing standards, we'll prefix the marks of all of our submaterial with A for angle, BP for base plate, P for plates, and then M for all other types of material. We can also easily accommodate customers that have larger projects where they'd like to separate the submaterial or the assembly marks by workshop package, sequence, or phase. The biggest thing that we ask for our customers to provide though is that at the project kickoff they give us clear direction of what each different phase or workshop package is and the order in which that they're going to be delivered for fabrication as well as for erection in the field. At the fabricator's request we can also export data files for CNC as well as electronic bill of materials. By default we can export DSTV files for angles, plates, as well as other rolled shape profiles such as W flange, HSS, etc. Now what we do here is you'll see that there is a file, a PDF that you can open, which shows the default settings that we have currently set up in the model. If there are settings that you'd prefer to be different and for us to export, just please review these settings and then tell us what things need to be changed. By default in this example, we can see here that I've actually got some pop marks as well as some of the hard stamp information that can be set up here upon export. Now we don't open up and check each individual CNC file, but what we are willing to do is again work with the fabricator and their production control department to go through each of the different settings that we can control and adjust in order to give a fabricator the most optimal and most accurate CNC files that we can provide. For plates, not only can we provide the DSTV files, but we can also export DXF files if that's what you need for your nesting software. Here inside of the DXF plate folder, you'll see that there's a series of DXF files for each submaterial mark. Here if we go into this text file, we can see that there are options to control the layers as well as other information for defining holes and slots. If you go to the setup file PDF, this gives an explanation of each of those different fields. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this KISS and Bill of Material Files folder. Here we have a few different reports including a KISS file, which can again be imported into FabTroll or FabSuite or other material information system programs. We open this up here with Notepad, we can see that this is an example of a Bill of Material list by assembly. Then we have a bolt summary list, which shows the total quantity of field and shop bolts on the project. Then we have a material list. This is great for advanced bills. And for the field, we can basically provide a field point-to-point -point list, which shows the quantity and type of bolts that are required between different assemblies. Now, if you have any special machines or certain requirements that require specialized exports beyond what you see here, then please let us know this in your detailing standards or during the project kickoff. This is important to us to know early on so that way we can make sure that we incorporate it into our process and we understand exactly what you need to get accurate downloads from the model. Now the last folder that we want to take a look at is the reference models folder. This is where we're going to do any sort of BIM exports that are required to send to the contractor or the design team on the project. By default we typically export a 3D DWG file as well as a 3D IFC file that can be used in software such as Navisworks, Revit, Tecla BIMSight, or even Trimble Connect as an example. 
Oftentimes, the general contractor will want these deliverables in order to do trade coordination and class checking. And we're more than familiar in working with different model origins and coordinate systems in order to work accurately on a BIM-based project. If there are BIM requirements or if there's a BIM execution plan on the job, then please share this with us during the estimating phase or even at project kickoff. We want to get this information early on the project so that way we know we're setting up things correctly, we can run tests, and we can prevent having to rework things because of BIM requirements that we didn't realize until later on in the project. Thanks for letting me walk you through some of the different deliverables that we produce for fabricators here at R11 Steel Detailing. If you'd like us to quote or take a look at some work, please reach out to us at email at r11.com or by phone at 313-723-3357.